Hello everybody, George Kenner. You know, I've always said life is about the questions that you ask. It's the information that you get that's really important. Today, I'm gonna to share with you, I went down to an event at Eon Laser in Melbourne, Florida, that was put on for their network of partners. Many of the laser companies have social media influencers that utilize their machines and then share with the public what they've manufactured. Now, in all fairness, if you haven't seen me before, I don't sell any products. I'm not trying to sell a business opportunity. I'm a part of the marketplace where myself, my girlfriend, and my friends, we like to the frustration of trying to manufacture a product the first time. I've made some really interesting things. But when I started to do this, I, I decided I'd rather buy this than a motorcycle. It was a lot cheaper and I wasn't gonna get hurt on it. But there are many people out there that buy these and make fabulous businesses out of these. Many of the people that were at Camp Eon do exactly that. There's kind of a hole in the industry. So you've bought the machine, you wanna make money with it, but you need a little bit of training. People that do that were the, some of the partners at Eon. I got to meet them. In a way, I was rare. I was like the only hobbyist that wasn't trying to profit off of the products they made. I'm going to, in the future, put links to some of the people that really have turned these into businesses. One of them is actually an attorney that I think has pretty much given up her law practice to do this, but we'll find out more about that. What makes this machine any better than the other? Again, let's go back to the questions. The Eon Nova has a system in it that they call an iris. And what the iris does is it controls the airflow within the machine. Now, if you were buying a CO2 class one machine, I'd probably want to talk to Eon about what that iris does, and then look at any of the other manufacturers and see whether or not they provide that. Now, what I did when I was down there is I know what that does. And what it does is almost every machine has a suction for the amount of smoke that goes back out of the machine. Because when the laser burns, it is going to create some smoke. So what that machine does is it not only sucks it out of the back with the iris, but it vents air to the front of the machine so you have both a pushing and a pulling of the smoke. Every now and then in a video, I say something that's not technically correct, and I caught myself with one of those. I've omitted that there are fans at the front of the Nova that actually push the air over to the suction, which is controlled by the iris. Now, just to make this perfectly clear, I wanted to clarify myself and I wrote to Eon. They wrote back and exactly what they said is going to be down in the comments. Now, who would want to shoot their laser beam through a cloud of smoke. It's like being outside and trying to get a tan on a cloudy day. You don't want to do that. Some of the light's gonna come through, but you any amount that is impinged, you don't really want. So if you're looking for a machine, that'd probably be one of the first things that I would get. One of the other things is, again, from a, a product manufacturing standpoint, Eon really tries to take care of their clients. They understood that trying to load up onto a CO2 machine or any machine for that matter, one of an item was kind of a pain. You have to open it, start it, re-hit it. Now, what if you could put six on? Well, Eon and Leck from Eon, the head engineer designed a machine that will do exactly that like that. It's called the multi-roller. It's exclusive to that company. Now, there's two exclusive items I believe that I've just pointed to, but you're gonna have to ask the other companies about this. Do you have an iris system? Do you have a multi-roller system? Look at the interior of the machine. Now, one of the companies, when I was purchasing, they were very, very big on the upper roller system. It looks like a piece of aluminum where they have forged a piece of steel rod into it and it rolls back and forth. Now, it gets dirty. I've even heard YouTubes talk about cleaning them up. You don't necessarily wanna do that. 
what you want is you want to be able to control the air volume inside the box to get as much of it out as you possibly can. So the cleaner the installation, along with the belt drives and um, the, the way the head system is operated, the better it is. You also may want to look at head weight. Ask Eon what their head weight is and ask the other people what their head weight is. Many times you can look just based upon the difference in the length of the, the size of the head. The heavier the head, the longer it takes it to slow down to go through the pro firing sequence. Now, there's another thing that I learned about these machines. There's two types of tubes. One's a glass tube and one's, the other's called an RF. Now, the glass tube shoots at a frequency that is different than the RF tube. The RF tube shoots more times than the glass tube. Now, why would that make a difference? Well, if you want a photorealistic engraving, an RF tube is probably a better machine. But if you want to cut, the glass machine that's firing and taking bigger pieces is probably the better machine. Well, this, <laughs> the Nova, is available in what's called the Supernova. It comes with both tubes. Could you find that? Now, I would say the innovation and the engineering that goes into one of these machines is really quite a bit, quite a bit to consider. Let's go to another standpoint. When these machines arrive, they are each one calibrated slightly different. I'm gonna use an analogy. It's like sighting something in, like a level. You need to make sure that it's properly calibrated. After it's gone over an ocean trip and been slammed up and down in the waves, you'd probably like to have this thing recalibrated as closely as possible. And those calibrations need to go into your light burn program. On a USB stick, they are loaded for you to put right into your version of Lightburn. Now, I've seen the other machines and even set one up, and you had to go into Lightburn and make those changes. It was not plug and play. It was more time and more research to figure it out. Now, what did the company do to make sure that as soon as it arrives, you can plug it in and be ready to go with the least amount of headache? You're gonna find out that there's one plug in the Nova. It has an air compressor and a very high quality chiller all in the same box. You don't have additional footprint size. You can take the, and I did this when I bought this machine. I actually got a slightly smaller machine that I could have got within the space that I wanted to. I just took a piece of tape and laid it out on my garage floor in my shop and I figured it out. Now. Some machines have what's called a pass-through, and a pass-through will allow you to put a bigger piece of material in and allow it to go in, you cut, push it again, make another cut, you can get a larger piece in. Now, I heard somebody slamming one of another manufacturer's machine, and their machine was pushed up against the wall. It was permanently mounted in a location where the pass-through could never be used. So really, how important is your pass-through? Those are a needs analysis after you talk to um, a professional salesman that can be completed. I mean, you can get in your head, this is the machine that I need. I only want everyone to get the right machine for the job. If another company had a facility and had the technicians and the support, they'd be putting them on, the, on YouTube just like I am. But you don't see that. I, I'm, I, I, I'm curious as to why. I would ask them, can you show me pictures of your facilities, your technicians, and where you're doing the recalibrations after they arrive in from China? Something that most people know, and you may have already heard this, but most of these machines are components. It's like buying a computer. Many of the components, like the Reese tube, Reese is a manufacturer of the tubes in China. Many of the machines all have Reese tubes. Some of the power controls, those types of things, they are manufactured by other companies and assembled, just like the Intel computer chip that's in every manufacturer's computer. These things are parted together. Find out what the part componentry is if you wanna go that far. 
or go to the company that's really that you feel is really doing the best they can to take care of their clients' needs and make them successful business people. Talk to a couple of the people. I'm going to put the links down in the bottom. Um, go to their social media. Ask to get in touch with them because if you wanted to start one of these businesses, you may want to talk to them. It's, it's just a natural pathway. It's something that you may want to consider. I wish you all the best today. If you have any questions, my email address is there. If you wanted to call me on the phone, I take a couple phone calls a week from people that just want to hear my perspective and ask me questions. Life is about the quality of the questions. Have a good day.